It's the world. I'm in PE world. We got a new Channel 5 video, man. Y'all know we always tuning in and reacting to these Channel 5 videos. Uh, this one is called Will Blunderfield. I could let you know right now, I've never heard of Will Blunderfield a day in my life. Don't know who it is. Don't know what they look like. Don't know what's going on. But uh, we going to tune in, man. Let's go. I'm shameless. I'm fearless. I am doubtless. Because fear in the present moment is fear. Fear in the past is shame. Fear in the future is doubt. Okay. So when you cup another dude's nuts, you're sending good vibrations, good chi spiraling up the back, down the front of each testicle. What just happened? Uh, oh, what is oh, going on? Oh, oh, oh yeah, baby! They're your batteries. So when you focus on your testicles, you're literally charging your batteries. And of course, you're probably the first guy in your family lineage who's doing shit like this, at least for hundreds of years. So of course the shame's gonna come up. What? Of course the fear's gonna come up, and of course the doubt's gonna come up. So I always just tell my students, say, what do your balls feel like right now? Smile into that feeling. Balls feel alright. Really staying grounded in your nuts and your body and your feet. Good. And then you reach for the nuts and you basically cup the nuts and you appreciate the nuts. Can you kind of feel the Reiki energy leaving my palm chakra into your ball sack? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we take three deep breaths through the mouth. And then you say, I see you, brother. I see you, brother. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And then you give them a hug. What's going on? My name is Will Blunderfield. Oh, I don't want to say that. Alright, fresh follow, my bad. Let me cut this out. Let me cut this out. My bad, y'all. New follows, new follows. Appreciate the love. Appreciate Thank the you, love, y'all. And I teach sexual kung fu. So it's the daily discipline of harnessing and directing your sexual energy from your loins up into the rest of your system rather than constantly just shooting it out like most guys do. Some people are like, well, you're saying that, you know, you should love yourself as you are. Why are you encouraging guys to grow their cocks? Right. But I'm just saying, let your cock and your balls fully exist in the form that they're meant to exist in beyond the poisoning. The sad truth is that cock size is the smallest it's ever been in recorded history. So my holistic approach is a three pillar thing. It's about getting the pesticides and the microplastics out of your body through superfoods and detoxification protocols. Then it's actually sexual kung fu techniques, like pulling, literally like taking the coconut oil and milking your penis down 50 times, up 50 times, left 50 times, right 50 times, and straight out 50 times every day. <laughs> My balls used to be the size of like, enlarge, like slightly bigger than an almond, and now they're both the size of like a Brazil nut. And it's great to be able to feel that. And it's also I, great to I, get uh, the length and the I, I kind of don't have my nut knowledge up, so I'm not too sure if his balls are bigger or smaller now. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't know. Yes. Easiest way to really come into the, the penis in terms of lengthening it, you literally just make an okay grip and you just pull it, pull it down. The penis and the tongue are the outermost extensions of the heart. In classical Chinese medicine, you're just like... Traditionally, you sit naked. My teacher, Montauk Chia, taught me this. Later on, we're going to talk a lot about screwing technique. Literally focus your consciousness into your nuts because energy flows where the mind goes. Right. There's also something that my teacher, Troy Casey, taught me. It's called testicle slapping. <sighs> so you do this for maybe two minutes. Not too hard, not too easy, just right. Mixing the blood and the chi in your balls, increasing your testosterone, which will increase your manhood. And then you take the energy of nature. Okay, so I don't know why I flushed the toilet, force of habit, but anyway, so this is Shivambu. Come on, bro. Good. He know damn well that ain't good. Oh, I got in my beard. I eat carrots, organic carrots, because they make me feel good. I drink my piss because it makes me feel good. Can you tell us what same-sex erotic bonding is? Yeah, same-sex erotic bonding is when uh, two men or a group of men come together to do things that 
this culture would say would be like homosexual. For example, two men hugging heart to heart with the cocks touching, breathing and doing our best to stay in a parasympathetic state of being rather than going into stress mode. The first time was definitely really challenging to really be present with actually observing my yeah. brother's body and being present with him watching me. The more you do it though, the more you spend time with each other too, the more you can actually just observe and witness the person for everything they've gone through. It's no different than any other part of their body, so yeah. why not give them some appreciation, send them some I love. mean, I understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. You know what I mean? There's different things they're trying to do to lengthen the yamin and get the yamins right and get the yamins, you know, the, the most healthy it could be. And you know how he said in America is poison. You know what I'm saying? I, I understand all that. And I understand what they're talking about here too, bro, but no. Of brother, you got a beautiful cock. You got a beautiful cock, baby. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Gotcha. And then you hug heart to heart because the heart is on the left side of the body with the cocks touching. When I started hanging out with these guys, it's not just Will, there's other people in Vancouver who are also engaging in, in these kind of practices. My assumption was like, oh, they must be gay. Oh, they must want something from me. It took a few years to finally build that trust with these guys that, oh, they're not trying to like subtly manipulate me and maybe they are gay underneath, but they're not acknowledging it whether we call ourselves gay or straight or trans, like we think that these labels make us all so unique and that they're so important, when really to me, they're just tools that the matrix uses to divide us and control us. Because I feel like we're so much more than just one little word. But if you're gonna call me something, call right. me a faggot. And then Facebook sensors go off and I'm in Facebook jail now for 30 days. Uh, plus I talk about medical freedom, so it's like a double whammy for me. Oh my God, the wild naked man denies uh, the existence of viruses. I probably and he just like talks about all this crap. I'm gonna be real. I, I, I like to react to a lot of things, but I probably could have skipped this one. I might still skip this one. I, I don't know, dog. I'm gonna try to make it through for y'all. You know what I'm saying? But I might, I might cut this one off. Yeah, I just don't I understand. About, and I've been going to med school for five. And I don't have to understand. That's that. the thing. <laughs> Did you actually read the links that I sent? Oh my god, just accept that you're gay. You're gay, you're gay, you're gay, honey. The word that I was called most in high school was faggot. And I just love the intensity of that word. And I guess it's like how some black people reappropriate the N word. Yeah. I like to reappropriate the faggot. So you experienced like a lot of bullying in school and stuff like that? Yeah, it was pretty bad. Like people would like draw cocks in my mouth on my student council posters. And I guess they assumed that I was gay because I was a singer. I remember I was living in Manhattan and I was dating this guy. We just, you know, had a great meal and we, we held each other's hands. So you right when we got out, it was, it started to rain and this guy takes out a switchblade and he's like, you fucking faggots, I'm going to get you. And like we ran and yeah. it just like showed me that there still is a lot of like um, triggering that can happen when two men or two women are showing love. Right. I mean, yeah, I definitely have same-sex attraction, and it's interesting, when I do things like detox from glyphosate and atrazine, mm -hmm. I start to feel an increase in a procreative urge. The testes tingle around beautiful women, whereas before they were completely, I was cut off from them. The more I retain my seed, the more I eat well, the more I do same-sex erotic bonding, the more pussy I want to eat. So that's what I'm interested in. How can we use same-sex erotic bonding, superfood nutrition, detoxification to enhance male potency so that men can feel more juicy and primal and wild? <laughs> Lingam means pillar of light in Sanskrit. The cock, the ears are really great places to massage because they've got so many nerve endings in them that relate to the entire body. So in my classes, we get naked and we literally massage our cocks together. And this is called penis reflexology. This is a diagram in terms of penis reflexology. It's a little bit blurry. So basically we massage each other's heart meridians to help release self-hatred while cuddling and watching Obi-Wan Kenobi. And it was just so beautiful. And this is what my Celtic ancestors did. They would also suck each other's nipples and share each other's beds before battle. If you do some more digging, Spartans were actually doing for sure, man. Support the movement. Bro. Same 
seems like this one's bond. brutal. They believed if you ingested the semen of a big strong man, that you would become a big strong man. And they still do that in tribes that have not yet been contacted by the West. In Papua New Guinea, for example, they actually have to suck as much cock as they can before they hit the age of 20 or 21, and then they can marry a woman just to get as much sperm into their bodies as they can because they believe it like it's got testosterone in it too that they are like increasing their manhood my testicles attract girls from all over the world my testicle attract humans from all around the world my balls produce massive amounts of testosterone bro this is this is like a south park episode bro real shit bro like on some real. my balls produce massive amounts of testosterone my testicles are an engine of alpha growth. My testicles are an engine of alpha growth. Beautiful. So for most of my life, I couldn't feel my balls. Now that I do this ritual regularly, I can actually feel the sperm being produced in my balls and I feel so much more grounded. I couldn't feel my cock and balls unless I was fully erect. And even when I was fully erect, I couldn't even really feel my nuts. I felt just like there was nothing there. Also, I was sexually abused by a doctor when I was four. So it was a combination of like a chemical, almost like a chemical castration plus the shaming mm -hmm. of the abuse. So the sexual Kung Fu lineage yeah. has literally helped me like feel my balls again, mix the blood and the chi in my nuts. People always say, Will, can I really grow my penis? And I say, yeah, just fucking pull on it. I witness his cock change for sure. Like his cock's gotten bigger. It was probably flaccid, maybe two, three inches. And then erect, it was maybe five inches. Now, it's usually about three to four inches flaccid, and erect, it goes to about six, just over six inches. So many dudes that I work with and that I've chatted with, actually, I'd say every dude, is worried about, is their dick gonna be perceived as small? This like fear of like, oh my God, if I show my dick. And this work has helped me to feel like, I don't really care about what someone thinks of my dick. I'm just like, this is my dick. None of you guys have super small dicks. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> you guys. The changes I've noticed in my own genitals, not just localized to that area, it's more so their interconnection to the rest of my body. If I'm engaging in sex with somebody, I'm not just focused on this little, as Will would say, a bubble of awareness in that area. It seems to have coalesced back into a full system where if I'm receiving a hug, for example, my whole body's involved usually, except for my genitals. I seem to be unaware of that. Even in those moments now, my full body's back online. I'm not so much emotionally castrated from one area or not. A full revival of the intrinsic system. And this is like, great to do like in a circle with a bunch of naked like a men. Grand Theft Auto character. We communicate subtly through the pelvic consciousness. I call it the testiculum. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the mycelium network in the forest. Yeah. The mushroom is the cock and the mycelium are the testicles. So it's like, let them fill with this yang chi, with this yang prana, and exhale, ah, appreciate it, right? Because gratitude is the highest form of yoga. So you're like, you're basically blessing your nuts for the upliftment of all of humanity, and you're increasing the frequency of the mini brain of your gonads by smiling and growling into them, ah. And you can do this when you're having sex with a woman. You can thrust if you're about to ejaculate and you don't want to ejaculate growl into your balls it's so powerful you go, ah and literally you can feel some of the energy will leave your system and come into your body instead and she'll probably be more wet because of it because women like to be ravished i went to musical theater school i was actually in canadian idol i made it pretty far they kicked me off for being too theatrical To fast forward throughout the ages, <laughs> throughout the last 15 years, I was teaching what we would call like Hatha yoga, like stretchy stretch yoga. Mm -hmm. And it was great, but it, it felt like there was something missing. I started to get into other modalities. I was like, I need more. And also I got addicted to cocaine. So I stopped doing that and I started Damn. to look for other ways to get high. Mm -hmm. Drinking my piss gets me kind of high. I don't know how it works. Doing breath work. Inhale, suspend the breath, squeeze the anus, sex organ navel, shunt the energy up your spine into your pineal. Exhale, keep the energy in your body, round forward, suck your abs in, shunting all this creative energy into the rest of your system. What the fuck?
inhale. High on your own supply, baby. Cash app. The easy way to what pay a male fuck? yogi to take you into the forest for an afternoon. Other dimensions. But the thing I love about rewilding and sex kung fu, it's about connecting to your balls, your cock, your tribe, and Mother Earth. It's about coming back into that wild state. Instead of being a chihuahua, coming back into that wild wolf state. This is your body. There's no reason for us to not have access to being free at all times within reason. I think the apprehension that people have in wanting to create a set of rules around that is that so many people have unhealthy associations to their sexuality that they are a danger, hence creating these strong boundaries in society. In order to get to a place where you can free the nipple and free the rectum completely, you also have to look at, yeah, the, the shadowy, shitty part of people that would want to take advantage of that or are only doing it as this means of getting away with something. You know, I want to show my genitals to people because there's something unresolved there, as opposed to, this is, these are my genitals, this is fucking it. No big deal. Semen retention. So that doesn't mean you never ejaculate. It means that you increase the time between ejaculating. I mean, if we think about it, a whole new baby can be created from an ejaculation. So if we're just constantly ejaculating, we're kind of wasting our life force. Mm -hmm. So I teach them how to separate orgasm from ejaculation. Mm -hmm. So then they can choose when they want to come, ejaculate, mm -hmm. or shunt that energy upwards. So when's the last time that you um, ejaculated? Last night. Yeah. Yeah, I can actually show you. This is this is pretty intense. So me and my buddy Brian did a new moon ejaculation ritual. We wrote what we wanted to let go of, and we ejaculated onto it. So it was actually very powerful. And then we let it dry. That's his. His is a bit more intense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With the recent ejaculation ceremony we did, my intention was to purge uh, certain energies or certain narratives. Then we do some sex kung fu, so testicular breathing, and then we draw up some of that energy as we're um, stimulating ourselves, as we're exciting ourselves, so that all the sexual energy doesn't get poured out of the ejaculate. And then eventually we bring ourselves to full ejaculation, um, and then later we'll, we'll, burn, we'll burn that paper. <laughs> so we're letting go of shame, caring about what other people think, overthinking. I think my comfort zone is shame. So leaving the comfort zone is coming to joy, but it's still, it's like, do I deserve to feel so good and so juicy? Because I felt so bad for so long. And what I really want to say is that gay panic has been brainwashed into all of our psyches because these types of activities release high amounts of testosterone. They, they lower competition in comparison. It's a sense of de-armoring. You know, there's far too much competition between men. And if the world's male leaders did this work together, I believe there'd be a lot more peace and camaraderie. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Come on, bro, with the close-ups, you know what I'm saying? Like... Copyright for this song. Flames to have seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken. Hallelujah. Sing with me. Hallelujah. 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 Actual show? Wait, oh. Everybody sing with me. Wait, are all those people there for him or are they just at the. 
What is it? It said it was Channel 5 Live, bro. Okay, yeah, that's Channel 5 show. Was a surprise performance. All right, man, that's what's up, man. That's literally the uh, wildest thing I've ever reacted to in my entire life, and now nothing will ever re uh, top a reaction ever. Ever. I cannot believe I made it through that. I'm a legend in flesh. Until next time, it's the world.